Hey everybody, welcome to the SLS, and that is obviously not the SLS. Crap. <laughs> oh well. Yes, welcome to the SLS reveals uh, thing, and I've got to press a button here. Is that the button I press? Let's find out. I'm getting all fancy. So here we go, and hopefully we've got it. Okay, so welcome to the SLS. I keep saying SFS, FLS. Artemis, we're just going to call it Artemis. Artemis Reveal. So I've been working on this pack for quite some time. And ta-da! Um, there's nothing on the screen. <laughs> because I'm doing the actual build. Because I wanted to walk through how to build the rocket with you guys. Because uh, hello everybody. And uh, yeah, um, if I just release this, people would like get 100 questions on how do I put pieces together and everything. So... This is block one, and we're going to start building it here on the screen. Now, <clears throat> first part we're going to put in is the core stage, obviously, because that's the center of the rocket. Like all my other packs, the engines are separate, so we're going to go over here to the engines, and we're going to pick out this Osprey engine, which is the RS-25. Yeah, I rename all the engines because I'm neurotic. <laughs> but there we go. And then we just have it where it sits in about right here, I believe. Oh, shoot. I don't remember what I had to do. Right. <clears throat> That's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. Haha. -ha. Um, so cheats. Uh, part clipping needs to be disabled, I believe. Yeah, so it goes like that. Okay, right. All right, so that's correct. Okay, so you do need to enable uh, part clipping right now. In version two, I'm gonna have it where I'm gonna make the engines so that you can double them up because you do need four engines for this all to work. There we go, four engines. So there you go, the RS-25 engines. And then we're gonna go back here to the Artemis pack and we will pick out the boosters. Now, these are the initial boosters that come with the rocket and they go here and they go here now if you want to you can toggle the squares and you can also toggle the lines or toggle the lines and the squares depending on which artemis launch you want to reenact so there we go and that will put all the boosters and everything together and this is the core stage now for Pretty much most of the rockets, the core stage stays the same, and there's a, a slight improvement on the boosters. Everything else happens up here at the top. So let's get into it. So this is the LBSA. I think it's like launch vehicle something adapter. And that fits there. This guy here is the interim cryogenic propulsion system. It sits in here um, nested. And then again, we have to go back to engines. There we go. Engines, and we have a pick of three uh, Eagle engines. So there's the Eagle engine. This is the one that's actually in the SLS right now, which actually extends. And then they have the um, two Eagle extra engines. I still have to play around with them a bit. So in version two, they'll be better updated. But they are for later missions. But I thought throw them in now and let people give me feedback uh, because they are definitely uh, a little bit more oomphy um, in terms of how they work. Then we're going to head back to the SLS Artemis and we're going to start putting on the top part, which is the OAS here. And then we have the stage adapter. Um, we can then put the European Space Module or Sur European uh, Service Module on top. And you can sort of see what this looks like on the outside and what it looks like on the inside here. Because we also have this, and I'll skip through that, the SA sort of gets covered by that um, fairing. Now, at this point, we can then add the heat shield and the Orion capsule that Prime 252 and I came up with, um, which kind of looks neat. Um, definitely a 
a take if you like it or not. Um, let me know in the comments. And then we have the top part, which is the um, LES system. Now, if we wanted to, we could put in this adapter right here, obviously right in the rocket. And then we have this here, which is the, we flip that out. This is the cargo variant uh, that sits on top. Now, this is the smaller cargo variant in version two. I'll have it extend upward and downward. But for right now, that is the base height that they're going to be using in, I think, launch two when they do the cargo. Um, so just FYI, that is available. And those who are keen to eye are probably going to notice, oh, look, we're missing another engine. <laughs> so we're going to go back here and we're going to find this engine, which should be at the bottom of the list. Um, and it's not, it's right here. It's the OWL engine, and that fits here at the bottom of the European service module. So that is the completed rocket. Um, and if we go here, we can toggle in and open, and you can sort of see how it looks like and stuff. Now, this again is version one. So if you see anything wrong or you have feedback, let me know in the comments below or head over to the uh, Discord, um, my Discord, and uh, there's definitely a lot of discussion on this over there. Now, I'm gonna take two seconds to check in the comments before we launch the rocket, just to see if anyone has anything cool that they said or are asking questions. So one moment, as I scroll through the infinite number of comments right over here, I could probably pull it over here. Um, infinite number of comments. So, do, 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 do. Um, yeah, okay. No comments, no comments, no comments. Okay, I'm doing pretty good. Um, somebody mentioned that I don't have a lot of sunlight. Actually, I spend a lot of time outside. I live out here in the country, so if I'm not doing mods or inside relaxing, I'm generally outside uh, doing a lot of work, um, cutting down trees and whatnot for the property. So we're good. And this is, whoop. Yeah, this is a custom mod. Um, this, yeah, so it doesn't, like, I could share this BP, like, I could. I could go um, share, upload the blueprint. Print. It'll probably upload, I don't know. I will add it here, BP, uh, but you need the mod pack. And I have no idea if this works. <laughs> there we go. All right, in the chat, boom. I have no idea if that actually works. I suspect that that is not going to work. Um, so give it a shot. Um, but yeah, I think you need the actual mod pack in order for the blueprint to actually work. So um, once I upload the mod pack at the end of this stream, you should be able to use that link to do this. Obviously, Cedric and Prime 252, you already have the packs as my alpha testers for this uh, project. Um, you should be able to do it right away and let us know if it all works. But, you know, there we go. Oh, the CubeSats. Yeah, let's see if we can add some CubeSats. Now, I have some little tiny CubeSats here um, that we did as sort of an interesting little project. Um, and hopefully they're going to work. I say this because I haven't actually tested the CubeSat launchers since I did the last stream. So we're going to put the CubeSats in here and hope the CubeSats don't blow up everything. I cannot stress how badly the CubeSats blew up the last rocket because um, of some stuff. I, I do know that the solar sail still needs a bit of work. And there we go. And I think that's it. What else? Oh yeah, we got this guy here. And then we got this guy here, which is too big. So we got to shrink him down. And I'm definitely not launching him until the rocket is well out of the way because I suspect he's going to blow something up. Um, <clears throat> shrinking down small objects in Spaceflight Simulator can result in very erratic behavior. So we got some CubeSats here. And we've got that. Um, and the CubeSats will probably be coming out on Wednesday uh, simply because I have a couple of them that I want to adjust. And I do want to tweak them a little bit more so they're a little bit more stable. I'm doing that in quotations, stable when they launch, because uh, as we'll probably find out, the rocket might explode when I launch the CubeSats. We'll see. I'm hoping they won't, but uh, yeah, um, 
small items in Space Flight Simulator um, tend to have very erratic results. So let's uh, go to the launch here and uh, see how everything works. Hopefully. I pressed the button. It opened. Okay. And then we're going to go back to the build screen because one little thing I have to do is because the engines are um, stacked, I have to actually do that. In version two, I'm going to set up the engines. I'm going to try to figure out a way of having it so you can multiply the engines like an engine multiplier. So you don't have to stack them anymore like this because I like it where everything is clickable. Like sure, stage a rocket um, for fun and all that stuff, but I like it where you can click on everything. So there we go. Um, to uh, Conception Mesera, apparently mobile uh, just got an update today. Um, so yeah, it might want to be worth to check it out. But generally, I think uh, the devs are doing the PC version and then they're porting to the mobile because the PC version, I think, is a bit easier to program in uh, Unity because you're actually on a PC when you're doing the programming. And then you port it over to mobile in order to test it. So I'm thinking that's what it is. I could be wrong. I could be right. Who knows? All right. So here's the rocket on the pad. Everyone look. Ooh, ah. And yeah, Cree design. Uh, you'll notice that the boosters are slightly lower than the actual engines. Um, <laughs> I got riffed on that one. Um, so we're going to max throttle up here. We're going to hit ignition. And we are going to turn the boosters on. Probably not that way. We're going to hit the main engines and we're going to go in probably the worst takeoff sequence you've ever seen. <laughs> oh boy. So, taking off, let's speed it up because as somebody might have noticed, um, we're actually on the realistic mode because this is designed for realistic mode. It will work in regular mode or normal mode, but it was designed for realistic mode. So. Let's see if we can actually get this into orbit in realistic mode. Because, um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure we can do this. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm also like, oh boy, I hope this doesn't uh, backfire in my face. I'm also hoping in realistic mode I'm, I, I know how to actually do the uh, curve. Because this little thing in the bottom here, this is great for normal mode. In realistic mode... It works, but you still have to get around the planet. So it kicks out about, I think, 2,000. Yeah, there we go. And now we got to get rid of those boosters ASAP. There they go. Bye, boosters. Um, I gave them quite a bit of a kick um, because I wanted them to clear the rocket. I may turn that down in version 2. We'll see. Um, but yeah, let's go and see how we can do this. Um, we're still technically in the atmosphere. Like... You can see here, this is clicked in. We haven't actually left the atmosphere. I think it's 100 kilometers in realistic mode. So, yeah. Um, also, one fun note. There is a um, custom uh, solar system pack called... Uh, I Was it IRR or ISS? Hang on, I'm trying to remember what it's called. IRS? I think it's IRS. Anyway, um, that's like real solar system or something. It's, like, it's supposed to be really hard. Do not play it on realistic mode because it actually already accounts for the realism in normal mode before real realistic mode came out and you will be in trouble. <laughs> You'll be in a lot of trouble. So here we are, we're actually launched up here and now we gotta see if we can get ourselves into orbit. So I'm gonna switch over to the map view. There we go. Where the heck are we and are we going to be in trouble? We are going to be in a host of trouble. So did we even get to 100 kilometers? Jeez. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said, I, I don't think that little tiny indicator is uh, super useful in um, realistic mode uh, because we are definitely not where we should be. This isn't. <laughs> I know we're going down. Um, yeah, we'll see. This may or may not work. We're gonna time accelerate though, because I think uh, I think we may have to do this again. Um, and do it properly. But there's a lot of fuel in this rocket, so uh, as long as I don't hit 30 kilometers, which I just kind of almost do, I, I, I can probably save it. Come on, bounce up, bounce up, uh-oh. Yeah, and the rocket just exploded. 
Okay, so what are we going to do? Attempt number two. And this time, we're going to actually turn the rock boosters on and the engines. And then we're going to uh, work. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I should have aborted. Yeah. Oops. This does have a fully functional abort system, um, which is nice. That's what I was going to show you in the second launch was the abort, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to try this again. We're just going to speed it up because obviously not everyone's going to want to watch this again as we do our second attempt in realistic mode to get this rocket into orbit. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is designed for realistic mode. Um, in normal mode, this is this is child's play to get into orbit, to be honest. It's like, wee. <laughs> All right. But this time I'm going to switch to the map mode as soon as we lose the boosters, which we should probably stage already because, yeah. All right, so boosters are done. We're going to get rid of the boosters. And now we're going to probably fly a little bit on the high side here because I want to definitely get altitude. Get that altitude um, as we go here. And basically try to avoid hitting that top curve because if we start falling down that's when we get into trouble so we're probably yeah so we're, now a lot of people when you launch normal mode you'll sort of go closer to the um, uh, apotheosis and then do a boost because that's the most efficient because I only have I just hit over a one on the engine rate ratio I, I, I need to keep that ahead of me as much as possible because I have to get this around the whole planet and I still have 10, 90% to go. Oh, this, this is gonna be, will we do it? Or is this literally not doable? I may have a pack that might not work. I don't know. I, I made a bunch of changes uh, to correct for things, but I'm hoping I did them right. <laughs> don't land crash. Don't crash. Yeah, yeah. If, 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 if we if we'll abort at about 70 kilometers. Because that's the point where I know there's not enough wind to hurt too badly. Come on. Flight the curve. Where are we here? There we go. That's right. We're not going to need to abort. We can do this. Boom, just shy of 70. Woohoo! <laughs> Eat that, everyone who says abort. I don't know if NASA does it that way, but that's how we're doing it right now. <laughs> there we go. And we can go all the way out here, time warping all the way. Yeah, see. We didn't need that abort. Although we do need to probably make some tweaks on how we launch in realistic mode. I'm sure there's probably a way of doing it. But uh, yeah, there we go. Reach low, low, yeah, reach low Earth orbit. All right, so now we're low Earth orbit and we have about 3% fuel. We're actually going to say goodbye to the tanker. We don't need any more. Um, it's not going to be super useful. And what I need to do is build a little system in here to... Uh, jet the uh, rest of the fuel and so that will deorbit because generally you try to get rid of the tanker before you hit orbit um and then we just need to get rid of this guy here this guy here that's the abort tower obviously if we aborted we could abort and it's gonna take off in some random direction and we don't need the fairing anymore so here we go here is the spacecraft woohoo we have it going all right now let's get to actually um, coming into this whole thing. So the engine on the spacecraft is a little bit different than others. Um, you actually have to extend it out in order for it to run. So it'll actually extend out, which is kind of cool. Um, we also have a very complicated um, RCS system in here. And 
that's sort of the rocket. Now, if we were to go to the moon, which mm, we probably could, um, navigate to here, we'd need to put in about 3,000 kilometers or meters per second of delta V. So we're going to send Orion to the moon because that's where it's supposed to go. And it has another little engine here and we can use the RCS system to clear before we engage the engine. And we can actually basically speed that up to get to the uh, moon, which we're going to send us over to the moon and then we'll come back for the ICPS um, and the CubeSats because they have a slightly different mission and they may explode. 50-50 on that exploding. Um, this is realistic. Oh, nah, I've done it. Okay, gotta remember which time zone I'm in. All right, there we go. We gotta turn off the RCSs, and then there we go. Okay, so I'm just trying to speed this up as fast as possible, but I don't want to uh, accidentally. I can't turn at 25x. It just it goes nuts. And then it's going to say we need to change our transfer. Yeah, so this is realistic mode. You can't, like with this rocket, you can't just do it all in one shot. Um, not 100% sure why that is, but it is. So we're just going to rapidly get that going and see if we can actually get to the moon. I have no idea if it's going to make it or not. Again, um, this is the first time I'm flying it in realistic mode because a uh, small little hint, I broke the European service module 30 minutes before the stream and I had to fix it. <laughs> and then rapidly eat dinner. So uh, <clears throat> I, I didn't have a chance to test this before I went live. So yeah, wow, we got 28 people. That's amazing. Oh, we're up to 29, super. Um, hey everybody, welcome to the stream, all that good stuff. Uh, please sure to give a like, and yeah, if you have comments, let me know because, uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely made this so people can enjoy it, and any feedback I get, I'm going to apply towards version 2, and version 2 is going to include block 1B and the theoretical block 2. I actually found specs for the equipment that's supposed to be in block 2, so um, I have a pretty close to accurate uh, block two versus, uh, you know, figments of my imagination. <laughs> so, and we ran out of fuel. Okay, that's not good. So I guess we did need the European uh, service module. Where is the European service module? It's over here. All right, switch to that. Let's see here. Oh, that's the fairing. Okay. Yay, the fairing. All right. What else do we have here? I wish these things were like size or something. Switch to... Oop, there we go. All right. So apparently we needed the European service module to get to Lunar because uh, the European uh, service module has a lot more gas in it. Oops. And I just broke the engine, spinning it at 25x. Awesome sauce. Well, we still have the RCS system, so we can still turn. This is insane. Um, all right. So a quick question somebody's asked me is, uh, have I heard of the Saturn V style core stage for the LSS? Um, I have not heard of the Saturn V uh, style of stage. I only know about the Block 1, Block 1B, and Block 2. I do have a Saturn pack that I've been working on, and um, that pack will come out soon. I just have to finish it because... Um, I sort of stopped it um, at the at the spaceship and uh, made a SLS, which we have here. So we're gonna switch this over to pointing north, just so this is a little easier for everyone. Um, I broke the engine off of it, so it's a dead stick orbit. Um, but that doesn't mean we can still launch CubeSats and hope they don't explode in our face. So let's see how this is all going to work. Yeah, we have a bunch of CubeSats here. I 90% sure I fixed them, and I'm 75% sure I updated the fix to the uh, program. So let's uh, launch some CubeSats and see how this goes. Um, we're going in order of, I'm most confident <laughs> this is going to work. <laughs> in case anyone gets offended, I don't launch theirs first. <laughs> I'm relatively confident that these ones are going to launch first. And that one just launched, even though I'm clicking on this other one. Yeah, small items, welcome to uh, 
um, stuff. So let's see how this all works. There we go. Yeah, this one here makes noise. I'm gonna probably see if I can turn up the volume because I'm not sure you guys can hear it. There we go. So yeah, so that's the uh, CubeSat making the noise. And basically it's scanning um, deep space um, and it's converting what it sees in deep space, um, all the signals it receives into an audible tone. So we're gonna switch over here and we're going to use this to not run into the CubeSats. Oh shoot. Yeah, welcome to without an engine, I don't have a lot of control. <laughs> As I said, there's a high chance something's going to explode in this part of the launch. I already broke the engine off, so, you know, oops. Alright, so, next we're going to see if we can launch this guy here. Okay, he went this time, good. And there he goes. And he's designed for low Earth orbit reconnaissance, and basically imaging the um, planet. So. We definitely need to launch him in low Earth orbit, which is sort of where we are right now. Uh, next, we have this guy here. Okay, let's see if he's gonna go. You know what, no, let's go with this guy. This guy is likely not to explode in my base. All right? And then he should engage little, oh, there we go, panels, and away he goes. And that's based off the Aerospace 10. Um, so that was a bit of fun, and again, apologies when I initially launched it, because, uh, yeah. Um, it didn't expand the panels out. Uh, the next one we have, I really enjoy this one here. This is a cool one. This is very clever. <laughs> uh, it's got little solar panels that are round. I, I like that. Um... I gotta do that for uh, part version two again. Con we'll have a constellation class, the round one uh, for the uh, European service module and all that good stuff. And then we're getting to this guy here. He's he. This was the first one I made for Cree design. Um, he goes beep 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 beep. There he goes. And then we have the last two. And the last two are the ones that have given me so much problems that I'm hoping they won't explode. And that's why. So that guy detached, but he didn't actually go anywhere. So he will eventually float away, um, but I need to figure out what's wrong with him and fix him. Um, but that one's really cool. This is Primes 252. Um, I just gotta figure out why it's not moving forward when I launch it, but otherwise it looks amazing. It's definitely, I think, one of the better looking ones, if not the best looking one. And I say that realizing it's the only one I actually didn't make. <laughs> Making things look good, um, Prime 252, he's got a whole human launch system and, um, oh shoot, what's it called? A Starship pack he's been working on. It looks absolutely amazing. And as he's getting it functional, it's gonna be definitely a pack you're gonna wanna pay attention to. Um, I think he's got some really cool modding stuff coming ahead. All right, and then last not, but not least is the solar sail, which let's see what happens. <laughs> it theoretically has an engine on here. I have no idea if the engine works. I've been trying to get this engine to work for like ever. And yeah, it, it's, it's gonna get really big and there's a lot of bleeping because the different satellites make bleeping sounds and we're very close to them. Um, and the way noise works is that it's basically a lot of bleeping. I'm gonna turn down some of the noise here. All right, there we go. All right, bleep, 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 bleep. Yeah, and it didn't run into any other ones because you can see here, these are the, the other CubeSats and this guy's pretty big. And let's see if he has engine on. Engine on. And the engine still doesn't work. So I still need to fix this guy here. Um, and then I have two more, three more CubeSats I want to make um, before I release the CubeSat pack. So I'm hoping Wednesday um, I'll have the CubePack uh, finalized and released. 
but um, yeah, it just I have the three CubeSats I want to make that have a bit more advanced functions, and then I need to figure out why the engine in this one isn't working. Because it, it like it's turned on, but it won't actually give me any additional thrust, um, other than a little bit from rotating, which doesn't really do anything. But this one here is supposed to have enough thrust to get it um, outside of the uh, Earth's influence um, by my math. But there you go. Yeah, the 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 solar sails are supposed to give us um, acceleration. Uh, there's basically an engine hidden in this component. Uh, that has a forward thrust, but for some reason it's not working yet. Um, again, it might be because it's a very small item. There's something funny in Spaceflight Simulator when it comes to stuff, but I will figure it out and I'll make it work. So that's there. Now let's see what we got here. We have, I think, yeah, this is the, we're going to get away from all the bleeping for a second here. So this guy here and I'm not sure what he's currently at. So this is the European uh, service module. It can extend out its uh, um, solar panels, which is kind of neat. And then if you press it again, it does launch the uh, capsule. And this is useful for when you're coming back. So we're going to do an abort launch. And then I'm going to show you the bonus stuff. The bonus stuff I didn't tell anyone I was releasing. So we're going to revert to launch you know what yeah revert to launch no come on revert to launch here we go okay so we're back on the pad yay nothing too hing so what we're going to do in this launch is we're just going to use the launch abort system so i can show you that yes the launch abort system actually works um and then we're also going to uh bring the um shoot module back to earth and you can see the parachute scheme i have so basically, when things go wrong, things still go well. <laughs> so we're going to just shoot straight up. We're having a bad abort launch. This engine fell off. This engine fell off. I don't know. A bunch of really bad stuff happened. Where are we? Oh, yeah. We are, we are horribly, 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 horribly problematic. So... What are we going to do? We're going to press this and we're going to eject the core. We can switch to this guy here. And there we go. We can use the launch abort system. Whee! The launch abort system, um, which does have enough uh, DV to. Oh, you know what? I probably should have done it the other way. All right. And then we can pop the capsule out. But I'm actually going to do that slightly different because we. I keep doing this. I keep forgetting that I'm like, I know how this works, but I'm trying to show you guys. So we're going to do this in atmosphere. In the atmosphere. <laughs> so we're going to put ourselves... Eh, I think we'll put ourselves about 50 kilometers up. I think that's a suitable number. Yeah, so... Because Spaceflight Simulator is 2D, I'm going to be working on an engine multiplier um, so that you can actually stuff like 27 rockets underneath the engine. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless. So let's say we're here. We're going to slow down time now. We're going to say there's a problem. Let's say one of the rockets just lost. Okay, there you go. We're definitely in trouble. So we're going to go here. We're going to engage that. And then we're going to do that. And that's going to allow us to uh, whoop, switch to it. Switch to it. There we go. And we just did our little abort. Solid fuel is gone. We do need to just give a little rock. And there we go. We have the um, capsule in the air. And we have to... Parachute is available at 5,000 meters. All right. So we're going to go for a bit of a ride. Because we have to go all the way up to 56 kilometers and back down again. That's okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the rest of the rocket. It's somewhere. And then we're going to come back down and I'm just going to turn like this. So the heat shield's there just in case we need it. Although I don't think we do. There we go. And then as we come to 5,000, we can click the rocket and engage the parachute, which while it does look like the mega shoot deorbiter, it's not as big 
and it doesn't slow the craft down as much. And obviously, 5,000 meters is the height rather than 300 and something kilometers, whatever the Jupiter is. So you can launch this in Jupiter. Um, so here it is, and it's going to slow down the craft. And then we're just going to speed it up because this will take a long time to come down otherwise. And we will come down to here. And at about, I think, 750 meters, let's get all the way down there. All right, so about right here, I think it's 750. There you go. Um, we lose the main chute, and we gain three small parachutes that definitely help slow us all the way down. So... And then at this point, it's just waiting until we land on the surface. Now, we can, if we want to, eject the uh, heat shield, um, just like a regular capsule. And then we come down, land here, nice, soft, and exploded. We apparently need the capsule. Don't eject the heat shield. Right. <clears throat> I don't know why I have it do that. Okay, you, you learned it here. Don't eject the heat shield from the capsule. You won't be able to land without it. Um, <laughs> but uh, there we go. So that is uh, the spaceflight simulator, and now the bonus stuff because bonus stuff. We're going to revert to the build, revert to build, and we're going to turn on infinite load screen because, well, this takes up the entire build screen of the uh, PC. So also today, I have released. Utility Pack version 4. <laughs> and, and if you're wondering what that is, basically it is the wheel pack that I came up with, with really big wheels. Yay, wheels. It comes with a little tiny rover with wheels that don't come out unless you click the button. Um, it comes with this here. This is a colony weld. So this here does not have any magnetic force because um, I know how much people hate that and the current update breaks it, so we can't have it. Um, but this is a permanent weld. Like if you seal two of these together, they will not come apart, uh, unlike a regular port. And the reason for this is because, oh, you have a bunch of new structural items and these structural items are actually kind of neat. We're gonna say 10 height, we're gonna go like this. Go like that. We're going to put a bar in between. I'm quickly going through this because I should have built this earlier. We're going to grab our little guy here. We're going to go back to the utility pack. We're going to grab the trolley wheel. Yes, a trolley wheel, um, like so. And adding to the structural, we have this little guy here and this guy here. We can do that. There we go. And what else do we have? Yeah, we got a bunch of other stuff here. We got this guy here. You can make him super long, super short, whatever you want. Um, a whole bunch of fun stuff in the structural. Um, but um, the one thing I wanted to definitely show you guys here, um, which is particular, because I know some people really like this stuff. Assuming I can get it to move, which I can't because the blue things. Oh, yeah. The blue things are weird. The blue things are weird. If you toggle them, they do weird stuff. This is again, a bit of a beta, so heads up. <laughs> um, so you can do this. Now, obviously this tower, you can build a tower out of this and that's kind of cool, but I actually built a tower and this, this mod took quite some time. So this one here, you can have the bottom top thing like this. You can have fuel lines in and out. You can have foot extensions. Um, you can make the tower wider, narrower, whatever to your heart content. Um, and this tower with the fuel lines will actually, um, there we go. I'm just gonna shrink it down. Number of fuel lines, we'll leave it at one or close to one. Welcome to weird stuff. It's not a bottom truss. There we go. And you can actually go and uh, build a launch tower really, really quickly. Um, for those who like launch towers. And then you can have it where, let's say at this point here, you're like, okay, 
I don't want the center column anymore. I don't want any fuel lines. And you can do this up here. And because, you know, what's fun, this part here is very similar, but um, we're going to go back to three, give it some extra height. Um, you can give it fuel lines. They don't do anything um, in this one. Well, they do. They transfer fuel between the, the stages, but you have it where you can actually, this is open space, so you can actually have something go through it. Um, and then down here, <clears throat> we can actually go foot extension outward, um, which is useful if you want to do it. And that basically allows you to very quickly build a launch tower. And if I designed everything correctly, which I probably didn't, did I remember to do this? Probably not. Oh, it's almost. Oh, I think it's on the regular. Hang on. Uh, bottom truss. Yeah, so you could do that and then stick it, stick this underneath and drive it around. Um, but uh, fair warning on that one, uh, the launch tower is quite heavy and the launch crawler can only take so much. So there you go. <laughs> And what would I finally want to do? Oh, right. Okay. And then we're just going to quickly do this. And we're going to put that on the tower. And then we're just going to sit here. And we're going to quickly build a small little rocket. Why? Because I want to show this really cool thing. Because this is actually kind of useful. All right. And there's a whole bunch of stuff, by the way, in the uh, version 4. Like an insane amount of stuff. I'm not even covering like half of it <laughs> so you have to go in and, and find stuff like i noticed things like um the expanding heat shield is in here um so there's a lot of neat things um and if we go like this and we hit launch i'll sh oh wait go back to the build sorry my bad i'm gonna strip all the fuel out of this rocket the rocket has no fuel how will we ever launch well that's what we're gonna see so this launch tower actually will start to, uh, if I switch to it, there we go. You can see here, it's starting to uh, build up the tower fuel reserve. And then I have hydrazine in there. Oh dear, no. That's not good. I forgot to change that. So, this will be launched about 30 minutes after the live stream is over because I need to change something because the, yeah, it's not supposed to be hydrazine. It's supposed to be tower fuel reserve. Anyway. The way this is supposed to work is when the tower fuel reserve goes to 100%, it starts filling up the rocket, and then you can use it to uh, fill up the rocket. Uh, once the rocket is filled, you do that to eject the rocket, and then obviously here you switch to it and you go, go, and it would take off, but right now we don't have any rocket fuel. So I need to fix the hydrazine thing. It's a two minute fix. Isn't that an embarrassment? Whoopsie doo. All right, let's go over here because this I know works. <laughs> All right, so this here is the trolley system. Um, it allows you to basically build a little rover, and you'll notice that these darker um, semi-transparent pieces and um, allow you to actually pass through them. And there's two pieces that do this, the Invisa strut. There's the extending one, and then there's this one here. So you can actually build like a super, super long um, tram, basically, or trolley cart thing. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, I think that was Cree Design that asked for it. So there you guys go. Lots of fun. And then, yeah, this is a rover core. So it'll have little tiny wheels. So if I time this rightly, I could probably drive off here and land on the wheels. Because anything else, and this is going to break. Oh, right. And one, two, three. Um, the other thing, too, is if you have this actually on a piece, these, these parts here, if they had control, can actually stabilize. Um, so you can take them lightweight up to your colony and then hit stabilize and they'll create like a weight down here that holds them so they don't bounce around on the moon. So let's see if we can land this trolley cart. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. Some explosions. So there we go. Um, so other than the little problem with the hydrazine, which I will put a fix in, I'm going to be, we're going to hit, uh, resume game i'm going to be launching these packs right now just uh give me a moment to uh, get that going so i wanted to show you this um i do have like this is the upgraded booster for block two is already here 
I'm also working on the European, um, or sorry, the extended upper stage vessel, which is basically the ICPS, but bigger. So block two is already well on its uh, way. Um, so that is good. And then if we go to here, github.emberskymedia is where you can pick up all of my different mod packs, etc. They're all up here. Um, this one here, I'm going to update in a few minutes because I have to fix that hydrazine problem. Thank you. Uh, but if we scroll down here, do, 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 I have it somewhere. And SFS Rover, this is gone. I, I, I put everything into utility. There was a big discussion on it. So this is Pico Space Artemis right here. We go upload a file. This is probably going to kill the stream. Um, it shouldn't, but we'll see. SLS pack one. Let's see if this kills the stream. Hopefully not. <laughs> uh, don't kill the stream. Don't kill the stream. Don't kill the stream. And it's probably taking eight times longer to load because I didn't think to do this before the stream, but you know, that's what we have. So it's uploading. I don't know how fast it's uploading. Um, yeah. So when it's finished uploading, um, we're going to be live. So if you have any questions, ask them now um, because that will be it for this one. Um, you'll have the new engine pack, uh, which has the new uh, SLS engines in it. You'll have the new utility pack. It's currently version 4, but wait for 4.1 for the hotfix so the hydrazine works on that uh, umbilical so you can actually fuel rockets using the tower because the tower does actually produce um, fuel. And then you have the SLS version one pack, uh, which is basically block one, have fun, enjoy. And then um, I'll have version two, which will have block one B and two coming up hopefully next weekend, we'll see. Um, and the CubeSats will be Wednesday. So committing the change, it's live. Probably everyone's gonna suddenly drop off the stream because you're gonna grab this. Um, and I'll put this in the stream so everyone can just grab it. So there you go. Um, and I will see you on Wednesday when we have the final CubeSats, which hopefully will not break when they launch. <laughs> um, as for questions, um, will the Orion capsule be updated? Um, jump over to the, uh, shoot, what's it called? Discord, by Discord. And if you have a, like a PNG file, like a photo file of a better uh, Orion capsule you want, I will add additional Orion capsules. I do know I'm going to be making a constellation um, style craft um, in block uh, version two or version three um, when we start coming up with other stuff. Because, um, well, sorry, let me get this straight. Version two is going to have block one B and two in it. Uh, version three is going to have the additional capsules. I might have one in version two. Uh, but it'll also have like the alternative designs and some landers and some stuff so you can actually, you know, go off and land on the moon and stuff uh, using some, you know, uh, Artemis inspired content because um, they haven't actually made them yet. But I've scoured the web and got as much information as I could. So there you go. Um, and that's about it. Um, and uh, yeah. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. All that good stuff. And yeah, if you're watching on the replay and you have questions, leave them in the comments below because uh, I do answer them. Or, you know, head over to the Discord because I'm on there often and other people are on there. So we can generally answer your questions. And if you have anything else, um, that's it. That's all. And uh, good night. I hit the end thing. <laughs>